Notice from the Foundation Science Division. The following file contains information related to the Markhaven Monitoring Project, and as such is limited to Foundation personnel with Marduk level clearance. Isolate, stabilize, communicate. Item number SCP 5078. Clearance level 2 Restricted. Containment class Safe. Secondary class Godel. Disruption class 1 slash dark. Risk Class 1 Slash Notice Subclass Alterius Assigned Site Site 145 Site Director Doctors Juliet Lewis and Clark Hamilton Special Containment Procedures SCP-5078 is contained in Situ within 257 Eagleton Street, Markhaven, Indiana. The property has been purchased through a Foundation front company and converted into Provisional Site 145. A glass panel has been installed into the front wall of SCP-5078 for the purpose of communication with SCP-5078's inhabitants. Following review by the Ethics Committee, interviews and periods of observation are to be conducted with breaks. Footnote 1. Current consensus among Foundation staff associated with SCP-5078 is that frequent observation and excessive interviews will lead SCP-5078-1 and-2 to be distrustful of the Foundation and will artificially affect their current day-to-day -day schedule. The prevalent political and social culture within Markhaven is built upon paranoia, distrust of outsiders, and staunch social conservatism, leading to the requirement for Foundation officials within Markhaven to be given elaborate backstories and aliases. Doctors Juliet Lewis and Hamilton Clark are currently portraying Lucille and Andrew Finch, a new generation Markhaven family. In case of a cover breach, amnestics have been authorized for administration as a last resort option. Description. SCP-5078 is the designation given for an Atomic Age fallout shelter and its inhabitants, collectively referred to as SCP-5078-1-2. SCP-5078 is partially subterranean, with the majority of the structure located underneath a suburban house in Markhaven, Indiana. SCP-5078, and by extension its inhabitants, were believed to have been unnoticed by the home's previous occupants, owing to a substantial layer of earth covering the majority of the structure. Soil samples taken from the soil layer show an abnormal amount of radioactive particles present, alongside trace elements of unidentifiable or undiscovered materials. Microbiological analysis of the soil has shown evidence of a substantial amount of colonial organisms, believed to be previously unidentified species of protist. Colonial observation has shown that the organisms, anaerobic, footnote 2, an organism capable of living without oxygen. Extremophiles produce oxygen through the decomposition of molecular and radioactive waste. This oxygen is transferred into SCP-5078 through tiny cavities present within the foundation of the structure. The external structure is built primarily out of a material superficially resembling concrete, albeit containing primarily foreign, unidentified materials. The structural foundation contains numerous cavities and holes, containing colonies of organisms similar to the oxygenating soil-based microbes. Both colonies are believed to either belong to the same species or are closely related. Currently, the only noticed difference is habitat, with the structural organisms classified as polyextremophile cryptoendoliths. Footnote 3. Organisms that live within rock pores or structural cavities. Internally, SCP-5078 is composed of one large room, crudely cornered into separate spaces, with a common living space and bedroom doubling as a kitchen. The interior is lightly furnished, with furniture and decor designed in an aesthetic closely resembling Soviet minimalism. Of the various material items present within the structure, none are thought to contain anomalous characteristics or origins. SCP-5078 contains two humans, self-identified as Galena footnote 4, Ne Tartakovsky, and Dmitry Artemev, a couple of Russian descent. Both Galina and Dmitri maintain that they have been married for 26 years and lived in the Soviet city of Stalingrad. Footnote 5, now referred to as Leningrad. Neither resident has clear memories of living in America outside of SCP-5078. Both entities are believed to not require either nutrient or caloric intake, as evidenced by observation in which neither entity ate or drank, no observation of bowel movements or urination, and an apparent lack of any food within the structure. 
present hypotheses suggest abnormal metabolic functions or receipt of sustenance through the microorganic materials and organisms present within SCP-5078's external environment. The current theory put forth by Dmitry Artemev suggests that his lack of sustenance is a side effect related to him and his wife's sudden appearance within SCP-5078. Addendum number 1. Communication Attempts Communications with SCP-5078-1 and 2 have been currently unfruitful owing to a language divide between the two groups. A Foundation translator fluent in Russian determined that the language spoken by SCP-5078-1 and 2 is currently untranslatable into English. Linguistic analysis has shown that the language spoken and written by SCP-5078-1 and 2 is superficially comparable to Russian, but written in a radically different style of Cyrillic script, and following different language rules, spelling, and pronunciation. Furthermore, both entities appear to speak in a heavy accent, leaving a translation into English near impossible. English is poorly understood by both entities. Dr. Juliette Lewis, head of the Foundation Linguistics Department, attempted basic conversation with both SCP-5078 entities. Dr. Lewis was able to give a simple English dictionary to both entities, and later discovered that both SCP-5078-1 and 2 were able to understand some basic English terms and words through writing, labels, and household items found within the structure. Various household items found within SCP-5078 were believed to have been written in Cyrillic text, but later changed to English. The cause is currently unknown, but it is hypothesized to relate to the transfer of SCP-5078 to current reality. This is further corroborated by viewing several items within SCP-5078. The English writing is choppy and stilted. As an example, the label on a container of laundry soap describes it as, lather cloth washing. For a one-month period, starting in December, Dr. Lewis kept a record of written questions and answers put forward and answered by SCP-5078-1 and 2. Dr. Lewis interviewed both separately, starting with SCP-5078-1. Addendum number 1-A. Dimitri Interview What is your name? Dimitri. My wife is Galina Atame. How long have you been together? Many. SCP-5078-1 holds up its hands, fingers outstretched. SCP-5078-1 then holds up their palm again, and one finger on the right. How long have you been inside? Many years. Time is wrong. Years and days. Why are you here, Dimitri? Here in Markhaven? I do not know of Markhaven. That is where this is, yes. There was a brightness stronger than the unidentifiable. People. Gestures to themselves. Dead. Many room, like this one. Pointing to walls. In the cities. Big. Shaking. We went there to be safe. And we. Praying gesture. To God. To keep us alive. He gave. Gave everything. What was the day that it had happened? November 4th, 1980. I do not like to speak about it. Together, right now, you happy or sad? Yes, of course, very happy. <laughs> Smiles, belly style laughter. What makes you happy? Galina makes me happy. The newspaper, hearing the radio, all songs, singing, ja, ja, ja. She is gone, yes. Have you ever wanted to leave? Of course I do. This is not life. Happy together and safe, but it's not life. Better than being burnt, but it's not happy outcome. I don't want her to hear that. That I want to leave sometimes, but it's not safe. We don't know if we're outside. Now it will treat us. And why is that? I feel trampled. Trapped, trapped, that's it, yes. I'm not happy. Sometimes, no, but I do not show it. It would make Galina upset. I feel sometimes... guilt? That is the word, guilt, yes. Unhappiness about being unhappy. So many did not make it, and here upset I am. It is a normal thing to feel. It's referred to as survivor's guilt. I do not know such things. I do not think of myself as survivor. I am happy with Kalina. I am happy we are together, but a survivor? I do not think that. Survive, yes, there has to be something left to look forward to, something to return to. There is nothing left. Only us. 
I will do everything I can for her, and she wants to see me happy, so I will be happy for her. She is nothing. So little left. Dimitri, are you happy? I do not know. Sometimes I am, sometimes I am not. There is, it has been so long. But I admit, I try to make Alina happy because I would feel happy myself. Is it working? I do not know. Addendum number 1-B, Galena Interview. You are Galena? Da. Da, that is my name. My mother told me it was the same as flower, but she was not right. But I wore it still on my sleeve. And what did you do for work? A factory for husband. I work fields. It was a good life. Very good. Hard, but very good. We trusted the Lord, and he brought us good life. And here? Is this a good life? I don't know if this is good life. Being safe, that is a good thing. I am so happy to have my husband with me. It will be such a lonely time without him. I wish I could break the walls and live with him. But the world is not safe. Is there any other reason that you stay? For him, of course. Dimitri seems happy. So happy here. I do not want to take that away from him. His happiness is important to me. He left behind everyone. Only us, I think. Only us were spared. I do not know why. God perhaps played joke with us. Galena, are you happy? There are days where I am, days where I am not. I would say that is the same for Dimitri. He has hard days, as have I. What I said about wanting to leave, wanting to flee, it is true. But it is also home. It is confusing, very confusing. What do you look forward to, Galena? I don't know what will occur after. We'll take days at our own time. We will be together. We will be here, as always. Our happiness is for one another. We will be here, always. Addendum number three, Dr. Hamilton's notes. Dr. Hamilton kept a journal detailing his experiences with SCP-5078-1 and 2 for the duration of his stay within Markhaven, Indiana. Following RISA requirements, the journal entries have been added to SCP-5078's file for the purpose of record keeping and further investigation. December 9th, 1980. The two of us have been in Markhaven for about a month now. We're still strangers here. I can't wrap my head around everything here, how clean everything is, how it feels like we're in a faux Disneyland Americana. Yeah, that'd be how I'd describe it, like Disneyland. Everything too clean, everyone too happy, smiles on every face, regardless of what's going on. After the apocalypse, folks from hundreds of years from now would find their remains, charred, yet smiling and grinning. I feel a kinship with Galena and Dimitri. They're strangers in a strange land. They don't understand this world, same as I don't. Jules is teaching them English, and while we still really can't communicate, I feel myself becoming friends with the both of them, but especially Dimitri. I can barely understand him, regardless of whatever language he's speaking. The accent just makes it so hard to understand anything. But that doesn't matter, I don't think. Just being able to be near him. I think it makes him happy to have a friend here. Juliet hasn't been able to figure out exactly why they're here, let alone here in our basement, but again, I don't mind. I really don't. I haven't had neighbors since I started working at the Foundation, and I don't think that they've had neighbors as well. It's a nice feeling for the both of us. December 13th, 1980. Jules made progress today. They're from the Soviet Union. Not uh, our Soviet Union, the USSR of our world, but the USSR of their world. I don't think either of us had any doubts that both Galena and Dimitri had came from somewhere else. You could tell. The bewildered look, the clothing that doesn't look quite right, not needing to eat, not understanding this and that. The thing that worries me though, is what if this escapes? Not them, but the idea that if the knowledge that two Soviet civilians are here, trapped in an American vault in the middle of fucking nowhere, imagine the anger that would occur. Rockets would fly, as would ours. Maybe that's how they got here, from rockets. They didn't board them, 
but the rockets and missiles hit their little prison and pushed it far into us. What if that happens to us? That either of them escape, or if the veil is ripped, and both the UIU and GRU had heard, and then their rockets will fly and hit us. Perhaps both Juliet and I will be trapped in a little room, being watched by strange Russians writing down this and that, every little thing we do. January 1st, 1981. Today is our last day with Dimitri and Galena. A skeleton crew is being transferred in. We have more important things to do within Markhaven, it seems. I will miss both of them terribly. I read Juliet's notes and the interview logs. Both of them seem to fluctuate between hopefulness and despair. Neither of them are happy for themselves, only for each other, it seems. Better than a lot of people, perhaps. Not everyone can adapt in the same way, at all. Even though I do not know if I'd consider them to actually adapt, it seems too difficult and every little thing could go wrong. Maybe they're managing well, and what they've told us is all facade. It could be. We had a meal for them, for the new year. Neither of them could eat or really understand us, but the company was so good for all of us here. The little things. Dimitri gave us a bottle of vodka, and we gave both of them my old Beatles records. The gift exchange was wonderful. We got closer to them, I think, than all the interviews and communication attempts. They're good people. They're very good people. Good people in a situation that they can't understand. Neither can we. When I look outside, and I see the rockets fire, the point is so close to me. That this will be all of us, trapped in itty bitty bunkers, waiting for the world to pass. An endgame. Like Ham and Clove, there are no winners in the war. Just little people trapped like Galena and Dimitri. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Lesby Friends, Everborn, Joe Light, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.